hyphens, we are going to see Naumbar Muthi Yojana, Indian Maritime. So in that uh, first news article is Paradigm of Coastal Security. And uh, before going to this topic, uh, the importance of maritime need to be understood. So as India is moving towards the global order, especially from economic sense, maritime becomes more important domain for India. As we know that India is a peninsula, which is surrounded by oceans and seas. So that comes the importance of maritime and its security and its aspect, aspects of economy to the country. And from economic point of view, as India aspired to become vital in economy, so providing economic opportunities not only happens in land, even ocean also play a major role in it. So that comes the importance of maritime. So in this uh, Yojana, we'll see three important articles, which is more relevant for our exam preparations. And that first one is Paradigm of Coastal Security. That's the first uh, article. Paragraph one, paragraph two, and paragraph three. So in paragraph one, they speak about certain important data of maritime that is given here. That is <laughs> oceans. These data, we can use it in your answer writing. That is, oceans form 72 percentage of Earth's surface. So, when now you write data in your answers, advisable is writing in percentage terms. So, it will be easy for the examiner to understand your viewpoint rather than giving in uh, factual data. <coughs> for example, if they 360 million square kilometers, so which is not required, which is not advisable also. So, 70, uh, 72 percentage of Earth's surface. And around 10 percentage of whole population live in coastal areas. Coastal area population is around 10 percentage, and they have given the that is 10 meters above sea level. So 10 meters above sea level, they are residing very close to the shores. And uh, around 40 percentage of world population, world population within 100 kilometers, forty percentage of world population. To understand this point, uh, if you go and check major cities across the world. We can see that most of the cities are coastal cities only, major cities across the world. Take example of Japan or take example of China or take example of certain small countries like Singapore, Hong Kong or if you take uh, in India, we can see that uh, most of the major, out of four metro cities, three are in coastal areas. And similarly, we can also see that in uh, South America, North America, so most of the cities are in coastal areas. And within 100 kilometers from the shore, 40 percentage of global population is being set. That's another important data. And from Indian context, from Indian context, the data are given. That's there are three metros as coastal city, so which has its own merit and also challenges. Metros and Indian population. That is. Coastal population in India is around 14 percentage. So, 14 percentage is a coastal population, and uh, trade regarding trade data. So, volume wise, 95 percentage, volume wise, 95 percentage, and value wise, 68 percentage. So this clearly indicates that in India, assume that we are exporting 10 components or 100 components, 95 components reaches out from India to the rest of the world through oceans and value is 68 percentage. If you are, India is exporting 100 rupees of worth of products, 68 rupees goes up through ocean. So this clearly shows the importance of uh, maritime to India. So these data you can use for answer writing that is done in paragraph 1. So paragraph 2. So they have given some numbers. Again, coastline for India is around 7516 kilometers, which includes 
West Coast, East Coast and Islands. Islands is also part of it, island territories. And this has a global importance in trading. World trade and more significant especially for international shipping lanes. International shipping lanes. So if you take this uh, international shipping lanes. If you take this 7500 kilometers, as I said, there are certain islands is also part of it. So they are located strategically in such a way that global international shippings are passing through that. A good example is we take Andaman Nicobar Islands. Andaman Nicobar Islands is very close to Malacca Strait, which is the most important strait in the world for global trade. It's a strait which is between Malaysia and uh, uh, Indonesia. So where entire global trade happens to that strait and Andaman Nicobar is very close to it. So this clearly shows the importance of Indian coastline. So that is done in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. And what the importance of Indian coastline? This is from global trade perspective. And also we have the most important vital installations. It is important for our Indian security perspective and also economic perspective. Like defense, atomic energy. Similarly, petroleum, space. For example, if you take atomic energy, if you go and locate all the power plants in India, it's very close to coastal areas. And similarly, all refineries are right now located in ports. And similarly, space like Sri Harikota are all located in very close to coastal areas. So that comes the importance of uh, maritime. And also, they have given data. In India, we have 12 major ports major ports and 239 non-major ports. So this data you can use it for your answer writing and can put as a table or column and uh, whenever you want you can substantiate with this facts. This is given in this page. Next paragraph 1. Paragraph 1. So paragraph 2. Paragraph 3. 4. And six. So this article is regarding uh, coastal security, correct? And uh, they say that uh, already we saw that Indian coastline is very important for international shipping and all. And they have said that uh, right now we have around one lakh ships. So one lakh ships uh, transit close to our shores. As global trade is happening in Indian Ocean and uh, one lakh ships cross, passes every year through our uh, very close to our coastal areas. And uh, so that comes the need for blue economy. So Indian government is focusing on blue economy. Blue economy is nothing but uh, effectively using maritime resources for our economic development. So blue economy and uh, apart from this which focus on port led development. Port led development, coastal shipping. So, these are the terms associated with maritime, coastal shipping, and also protocols, trade protocols, trade protocols, right? Cruise uh, tourism. So, even there's a potential for tourism in coastal areas, cruise tourism. And we yeah, have this Sahar Mala project. Apart from this, you also have this Sagar Mala project. So, these are <coughs> regarding uh, uh, maritime aspects of India, what the potential and why we need to focus on that's done in paragraph 1. So, paragraph 2 who are the stakeholders? Paragraph 2 about, uh, speaks about stakeholders in ocean governance. For stakeholders means uh, the major play is regarding maritime in India. So which includes very co common sense answers. For example, it includes Coast Guard, Indian Navy, Coastal Security, Customs, Fisheries, Coast Authority, Coast, uh, Port Authorities, Intelligence Agencies. They are the major uh, um, yeah, stakeholders. Whatever happens in oceans, it has a direct import, impact on these particular institutions. So they are called as uh, stakeholders in ocean governance. Any decisions by government regarding maritime they play a major role in it. 
So that's done in paragraph two. And paragraph three, in this uh, Coast Guard play very effective role in coastal security or coastal security. Is based on Coast Guard's Commander Coastal Command. So Indian Coast Guard is designated as Commander Coastal Command. So right now for our coastal security, Coast Guard plays an active role and they are coordinating with all central and state agencies. So this clearly shows the importance of Coast Guard here. That's given in paragraph 3. And uh, so we have the standard operating procedures. So they have this SOPs for all these things, standard operating procedures. That's going in paragraph three. And paragraph four. And uh, we have this Sahar Kavach, a biannual exercise for postal security. These are the answers, we, these are the points we can use it for the answer writing biannual exercise for coastal security. Again, Coast Guard play a major role in this. So, two years once we have this uh, particular exercise conducted in India for coastal security. That's given in paragraph 4. And also, we have this coastal police stations, 200 coastal police stations and uh, this given 200 coastal police stations. is run by state governments, coastal police stations and uh, okay. and also surveillance in shallow waters and coastal mapping is done. So all these are being done, coastal mapping. So this all clearly indicates that how our Indian government give greater focus on coastal security. And in paragraph 5, it speaks about this coastal surveillance network. Coastal surveillance network coastal surveillance network and uh, that is use of technology here the name itself says coastal surveillance so they are going to monitor our uh, coastal areas and they have given 25 nautical miles until 25 nautical miles Indian establishments are monitoring that and we have uh, 38 radar stations and uh, all these are being done, mobile surveillance systems are being done. So, uh, in your answer writing, you can use this term called Coast and Surveillance Network. Use of modern technology until 25 nautical miles to check what is happening within the Indian seas. Okay, that is there in paragraph uh, 5. And paragraph 6, uh, so we have institutional mechanism called National Committee. So, National Committee on Strengthening, strengthening of maritime and coastal security. So, NCSMS, National Committee on Strengthening Maritime and Coastal Security. Coastal Security. So, right now, uh, so they are the apex level monitoring body highest level monitoring body highest level monitoring body and review the implementations of coastal security so this is the institutional mechanism in India so this is given in this pages so we can see that institutions are being created and we can also see that uh, annual exercise biannual exercise are being done so that uh, coastal security is ensured in India Next, we have paragraph 1, paragraph 2, and paragraph 3. So, in paragraph 1, so as we already know that uh, 7,516 kilometers of coastal area, again they have given some data for it, that is one third of our land borders. So, India have borders. As you know that India is a subcontinent and it has so many uh, other countries are there. So we have a lot of uh, border with other countries and one third of that uh, is a land border and uh, remaining, uh, remaining is which is equivalent to that land border. That's the area this 7516 kilometers and we have this exclusive economic zone. So exclusive economic zone. 
in waters that is around 2 million square kilometer so exclusive economic zone the name itself says that this is the area where india can exploit the ocean for its resources that's called exclusive economic zone that is 2 million uh, uh, square kilometer and which is equivalent to 61 percentage of equivalent to 61 percentage of our land mass 61 percentage of our land mass and uh, coast guard play the active role in protecting this exclusive economic zone okay. that is why given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 and finally last one paragraph 3 and uh, we have this uh, 20, uh, 26 11 coastal security issues happen and right now we have this uh, institutional mechanism what we already saw it's all comes under multi-stakeholder multi-stakeholder approach in coastal security so this we already saw that uh, the previous page we saw this particular institution as an apex monitoring body of coastal security and uh, so ministry of home affairs also play a major role in it and through border, border management divisions ministry of home affairs through border management division so they ensure the coastal security of our country and uh, the primary aspect of this paragraph 3 is multi-stakeholder approach so this is the first article Second article is regarding port led development. Port led development. So, paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, in paragraph 1, it speaks about this Sahar Mala project. Sahar Mala project. It's nothing but port led development. So we know that we are in globalized era where all countries are interacting with each other even they say a term called global village so there comes the interaction through trade also where coastal play areas becomes more important that is port led development and Indian government is giving importance through the Sagarmala project and what the biggest imp importance of this is uh, when you go for port led development under this project they are going to focus on quick efficient and cost effective cost effective trade quick efficient cost effective trade so and also they focus on intermodal solutions intermodal intermodals and also india can also act as a, a destination for further trade so when the trade need to ha ha happen for long distance india is very strategically located in indian oceans so uh, ships of other country can come to india and uh, from there they can also take to the other countries so that is also another important objective of it and also they are also focusing on connectivity with under this project they are focusing on connectivity with connectivity with main economic centers main economic centers this is through means of rail inland waters coastal and road services this we can apply your logical sense and under the Sahar Mala project they also connect with this uh, industrial areas of India and we know that industrial areas are mainly located in hinterlands or interior parts of India and the primary reason is when you want to develop an industry most of the time in uh, uh, manufacturing sectors they try to put the industries very close to the raw material basis it's nothing but a uh, mineral basis they put the industries there so that cost of the products will be very less as you're minimizing the transportation you can think that take example of mining industries and steel manufacturing plants are very close because when you mine you take it very close to the industry you manufacture it you make it as a product then you can fix the prices premium prices where they're ready to pay, uh, pay the prices but if you think of putting a steel plant outside of that area where you transport the raw materials only 30 percent becomes a product another 70 is based so most of the time industry location is always very close to the resource base so under the Sagarmala project what government is saying that 
has port led development they are going to connect all this interland through rail networks or inland waterways and road services that's all part of this project and paragraph 2 there are three major pillars three pillars of development under this project three pillars of development one is port led development first one is port led development port led development and especially through this uh, better coordination and uh, inter agency and collaboration all these things comes under the next one is regarding enhancing infrastructures to enhance port infrastructures because we want to handle large amount of uh, trade port infrastructure should be very strong so that uh, the waiting time in the ports are reduced a lot which is also important factor in global trade but also efficient evacuation to and from hinderland so hinderland is what i say connecting with industries which is mostly located very close to the uh, raw material bases and uh, this sagarmala project has has one important pillar that is efficient evacuation to and from to and uh, from from hinderland so these are the three major pillars which is given in paragraph and paragraph 3 paragraph 4 5 and 6 so paragraph 3 they primarily focused on to enhance enhance capacity of major on non major ports major on non major ports in india and we already saw that in india we have 12 major ports and as per this project they want to enhance the capacity that is given in paragraph 3 and uh, and also and also inland waterways and all those things they have given and uh, to enhance the existing ex- trade correct to develop inland waterways and also to develop manufact to connect manufacturing sectors correct so logistic hubs to develop logistic hubs to connect with manufacturing centers so this is all given in paragraph 3 plus paragraph 4 so along the sagarmala project they are also focusing on skill development coastal so- uh, tourism r and d and all skill development coastal tourism coastal tourism and r&d activities once you say that you want to develop the nation through ports automatically a lot of other allied aspects need to be strengthened for example skill development of local population is required because trading consists of a uh, flow of goods and where where comes the importance of logistic industries so that you need to develop skills for all these things and also you need to have uh, you can there's a great potential for coastal tourism because uh, as ports are uh, filled with uh, ships from across world and as a potential for tourism is also there and also r&d activities so that you can make the trade very efficient so that is all part of this sagarmala project and also we have this uh, technology enabled skill development uh, for this skill development uh, they have set the center of Excel, uh, center of ex- uh, excellence in maritime and ship building center of excellence for maritime and ship building and ship building and this primarily focused on skilled manpower to develop skilled manpower for maritime so that is being done under this particular uh, sagarmala project and whereas in paragraph 5 and they focus on capacity building so capacity building capacity building similarly infrastructure development infra development and social development so that comes the role of both union and state governments union and state governments 
Union of State Guards. As paragraph says, six focus on developing tourism. So under the Sahar Mala project, Ministry of Tourism is also in, involved in it. So, um, what, and they primarily focused on uh, coastal uh, circuits, coastal circuits, especially this related to tourism uh, potential. That is Swadesh, Darshan scheme. So to develop this coastal security, yes, coastal tourism, sorry, and also cruise tourism. They are focusing on cruise tourism, cruise tourism, and also lighthouses, which has potential for tourism, and heritage museums, heritage museums, heritage museums, and underwater galleries. Underwater galleries. These are the potential of tourism, especially under the Sahar Mala project. And uh, skill development program is given in 21 districts right now. Skill development is given in 21 coastal districts. Coastal districts under this Ministry of Ministry of Rural Development. So Ministry of Rural Development, and they have a scheme called. Dean Dayal Upadhyaya Yojana, where they focused on providing skill development in 21 coastal, coastal districts. And this points we can use it especially regarding coastal related questions, especially projects like Sagar Mala, you can relate all this information. And also, there is a, a diagram given in the top which can be used as a Simple diagram to show the importance of Sahar Mala that is reducing the cost of transportation and also optimizing time and cost in XM of container movements. XM is export import container movements, lowering logistics cost by uh, uh, putting industries very close to the coast and improving export competitiveness. When you do all these things, export competitiveness also increases because your product cost goes down and in global level you have a greater demand for your products. These are the main objective of uh, Sagar Mala also, that is given. The next uh, article is Indian Coastal, so Indian Coastal Community and Climate Change. So paragraph 1, Paragraph 2. So in Paragraph 1, it speaks about uh, coastal regions and they say that around 250 million Indians live within 50 km of the coast. So out of this uh, 1.4 billion population to 50 million Indians are very very close to 50 kilometers and they have given 1300 <coughs> offshore islands example Andaman Nicobar <coughs> or uh, we can relate with uh, all the islands spread across Arabian Sea and Bay of <coughs> And uh, so, and also we have this uh, 514 islands in main, main mainland coast and uh, island territories is also there, around 868 eight, island territories. So this much uh, categorization is not required for our answer writing, just basic understanding is enough. Whereas in paragraph 2, so there are a lot of challenges for coastal communities. So challenges for coastal communities that is going to be discussed in this article. So challenges of coastal communities and especially by means of natural calamities like floods, tsunamis, this are all part of the uh, issues faced by coastal communities, correct? And apart from this, uh, they have this uh, problem of uh, 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 salt incursions, all these are part of it. So that's they have given there. So coastal communities have some unique set of problems because they are very close to ocean areas okay so that's given in that uh, areas and also importance of coastal communities are they are responsible for fishing fishing salt production salt production aquaculture aquaculture animal husbandry These are some economic importance of them. 
paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3, paragraph 4, paragraph 5, 6, 7. So, in paragraph 1, as we know that coastal uh, area is important for India and they have this unique set of problems, we have this coastal zone management guidelines. Coastal zone management guidelines management guidelines which is given based on MS Swaminathan report 2005 Swaminathan report 2005 so based on this report right now in India we have this coastal zone management guidelines and uh, especially to face the problems of coastal communities and uh, and the Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change have came out, come out with this concept called hazard line in coastal areas. Hazard line and uh, they identify the areas where we have the possibility of natural calamities they identify this uh, hazard lines and also we have this coastal regulation zone notification again part of Ministry of Environment and Forest, Coastal regulation coastal regulation zone notification notification and all related to this aspect is to resolve the problems of uh, coastal communities so already we have certain mechanisms in india that is given in paragraph one and we'll identify certain issues and problems for coastal communities in that paragraph two it's regarding this sea level rise sea level rise sea level rise so so globally they have given uh, some data sea level rise global globally global data sea level rises i'll just put slr sea level rise slr is around 4.5 mm per year so globally seas across the world increases by 4.5 mm per year and uh, they said that 10 percentage 10 percentage of coastal population 10 percentage of coastal population live in low-lying areas so they are the first one to get the impact of sea level rise that's the data clearly indicates and uh, this results in but the impact of sea level rise is retreat so population need to retreat and submersion so land can be submerged erosion can happen so erosion can happen and extreme marine events extreme marine events so this is the impact of sea level rise that is given in paragraph uh, 2 whereas paragraph 3 results in so what the impact of all this thing is especially squeezing of squeezing of settlements as people need to leave their place of residence because of sea level rises increase squeezing of settlements so reduction of common property reduction of common property so common property and I will say destruction of destruction of infrastructures like roads and all these things so this is all the problem of uh, sea level rises and uh, so right now we have this uh, ministry of environment and forest climate change and uh, to protect the life and livelihoods of coastal communities they have this survey of india conducted by this national center National Center for Sustainable Coastal Management Sustainable Coastal Management they are preparing this hazard line preparing hazard line map and this is taken as a major criteria for uh, all the uh, activities in coastal areas so that is given there and uh, and this part of this uh, disaster management plan this hazard line Hazard line is part of this disaster management plan 
especially in coastal areas disaster management plan in coastal areas and uh, this helps for this helps for mitigation measures mitigations and also adaptive measures adaptive measures the next thing is increase sea surface temperature next problem is like sea level rise next problem is given in paragraph uh, 6 that is increased sea level, sea surface temperatures increased sea surface temperature increased sea surface temperature as the primary reason for this thing is greenhouse gas trap because our planet has this greenhouse gases this acts as a trap and as this because of this increase in water temperature increase in water temperature especially in the surface that's called sea surface temperature and uh, and primarily where has impact us impact us fish migration because fish, fishes are very sensitive to temperatures based on that they have the migration patterns or not fish migrations and uh, fish breeding fish breeding and uh, habitat loss habitat loss this is all because of uh, increasing sea surface temperature and uh, also this results in ocean acidification current patterns all have impact on it ocean acidification the cycle once the surface surface sea uh, temperature changes a lot of other aspects in the ocean ecosystem changes that's given in paragraph 6 and 7 paragraph 6 and 7 paragraph 1 paragraph 2 3 4 so in paragraph 1 it is also found out when now the sea surface level temperature increases and uh, tropical disturbances tropical disturbances is primarily focused on temperature that is cyclones example cyclones will ha happen in 26 percent 26 degrees celsius and when now there's increase in uh, temperature of uh, ocean water especially surface water the intensity and frequency increases results in intensity increase intensity and frequency of cyclones this is the problem of uh, surface level temperature increase in sea waters okay, that is given the next thing is shoreline change so paragraph next problem is shoreline change so shoreline changes is primarily focused on changes happening in uh, soft rocks and beaches soft rock and beaches and uh, so when the erosion and this primary reason for this thing is erosion erosion and uh, when what is there are different scale of erosions that is high erosion high erosion means when there are 5 meters per year when there is a loss of 5 meters per year that is called high erosion whereas medium erosion medium erosion when is there is a loss of 2 meters per year 2 meters per year and low erosion the loss of 5.5 meters 5.5 uh, 0.5 meters per year and stable coast is uh, below that so that is all the prior aspect of it and how to solve this problem is by construction of sea walls construction of sea walls and this we can see in most of the coastal areas correct correct breakwaters having breakwaters so this we can see a lot of uh, uh, coastal areas and uh, also in certain movies and all especially when you say uh, Hollywood movies and all we can see the coastal areas will be very different when compared with the natural coast they have all this uh, preventive mechanisms okay. and uh, and what the biggest impact is economic impact because of this because of uh, shoreline changes economic impact it's a general term property loss of property loss of tourism potential
So these are all given in <coughs> paragraph. Paragraph 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in paragraph 1, it's regarding salt water intrusion is another climate change issue in coastal areas and uh, this we can see lot as a problem in households correct household problem because of drinking water becoming more salty drinking water becoming more salty because of uh, salt water intrusions and uh, and primary reason is uh, why this happens is this given in paragraph 3 that is inappropriate usage of land landscape inappropriate land usage in coastal areas coastal areas the next thing is uh, poor management water management poor water management this is regarding government systems over water management water management and impact is on livestock impact so impact is on livestock and impact is on livestock and productivity productivity especially in agriculture agriculture so this is given in uh, paragraph 1 and 2 and paragraph 3 speaks about another climate change issues in coastal areas drought drought and especially this has an impact on coastal villages impact on coastal villages and which has a more economic and social negative impacts And our paragraph 4 speaks about reduction in capture of fishery. Capture of fishery. And uh, the primary reason people always believe is uh, there is a reducing stock of fish in uh, oceans. But the reality is not only that, it is reducing fish stock. And apart from this, the primary reason for this thing is climate change. And there's a case study given in this particular uh, paragraph and they found out that in Malapuram district so Malapuram, Malapuram district of Kerala the catch of sardines sardines and mackerel type fishes were primarily reduced because of they are moving to deep waters because of a lot of other changes in ocean ecosystems so they are moving to deep waters initially they are very close to coast they are moving to deep waters because of climate change issues right now the capture of that sardines and mackerels are very low in Kerala especially Malapuram district one of the primary reason is not only reducing the stock of fishes and all other primary reason is the pattern of fish Habitat has changed and they, are more, they have moved toward deep waters. So that's the data given here. This case studies can be used in your answer writing. Paragraph 1, 2 and 3. So to tackle this, uh, paragraph 1, to tackle these issues. And uh, the paragraph 1 says we need to focus on livelihood. We need to focus on livelihood, livelihood vulnerability index, vulnerability index to identify location specific, location specific problems. And what this paragraph says is to all the problems what we discussed above. We need to have this livelihood vulnerable index to identify location specific issues and based on that we can take some corrective actions. 
corrective actions can be based on this. So this is given in paragraph 1. And uh, whereas paragraph 2 says that uh, especially we need to focus on awareness creation, capacity building, awareness, capacity building, and also mock drills for coastal communities. All the problems were discussed before. And another uh, aspect is regarding this uh, fisheries. What are the recommendations are given us? Uh, they focus on near shore, near shore cage culture. So you can develop certain fisheries based on this near uh, near uh, near coast uh, near shore cage culture, aqua culture, aqua culture, and mariculture activities. Agricultural activities so that this can be done through PPP mode, public private partnership mode. So, this can be encouraged in coastal communities so that uh, there will that be a livelihood opportunity for them. So, that is given in paragraph uh, 3. And also, we need to focus on construction codes of building. Construction codes, construction code for buildings in coastal areas. And especially, it is primarily focused on uh, minimizing the impact of climate change and also cyclone in, uh, resistance and all those things can be there. And next one is, it also speaks about research and development, <coughs> research and development for uh, climate change issues in coastal areas, climate change in, climate change issues in coastal areas. And apart from this, paragraph 4 also speaks about hazard lines, which we already discussed, hazard lines. And also we have this hazard profile maps. Hazard profile maps. Hazard profile maps and proper mitigation issues. Proper mitigation issues. And this page speaks about how to resolve the problem of climate change in coastal communities. Thank you.